and welcome to the Astrology and Spirituality Show for week commencing the 25th of October. Thank you so much for all your gorgeous comments over the last week. It really does mean a lot to us. But there's a couple of comments particularly that you want to, to mention. Yeah, so Marjorie, thank you so much for your comment about the dream that you had where um, Patrick and I were packing and we were laughing. I thought that was a really lovely uh, dream, so thank you for sharing that. And um, yeah, Gabrielle, you suggested last week that we do an Asteroid of the Week. Last week... Um, in terms of the uh, mythology. Yeah, in terms of the mythology behind it. So this week we're going to look into the asteroid of Vesta and the uh, astrological, mythological uh, meaning behind it. So if you want to have a read of that blog post, it will be in the description box beneath this video. Oh, that's absolutely lovely. Now, in terms of the astrology this week, well, we do have a quite gorgeous alliance between Venus in Sagittarius and Jupiter in Aquarius. Now Aquarius and Sagittarius have some commonalities, both love freedom, both very independent, can be quite frank in their uh, discussion, but uh, this particular aspect brings together the two benefits of uh, astrology, uh, the greater benefit being Jupiter, the lesser being Venus. So that could point towards some good fortune and um, particularly around a travel plan and a group of people, or maybe it could be uh, a group of folks having some kind of flutter of some kind. But Neptune does forge a more uh, deceiving potential angle to Venus. So it's just important if we uh, met somebody who was offering us something, maybe if it was a first date, you could definitely live in the moment, but just keep one toe on terra firma. The first half of the week, Mars and Pluto are clashing and because Mars is in the part of its journey through the zodiac where it's technically debilitated maybe is that the power of Pluto someone's going to try and push quite hard on something perhaps in a professional situation and we may need to push back but also the sun in the second half of this week is in a square with Saturn and there's also a quarter moon in Leo. So that means there's a, a, a T-square, if you like, between the energies of the Sun in Scorpio, the Moon in Leo and Saturn in the sign of Aquarius. So I think anything to do with risk-taking needs to be very carefully assessed before plunging in. And then, right at the end of this week, Mars returns to the second of its two homes into the sign of uh, Scorpio, where it will be for the following six weeks. So that could be very, very exciting, a very passionate transit. Now, in terms of the hermetic will, what have we got this week? Well, we touched a little upon, uh, a little bit upon it last week with the Five of Cups, and we're still in that energy this week. So the Five of Cups is very much about feeling that we've missed out on an opportunity and, and longing to get back to where we were. But if we think about it, all of our life experiences, good and bad, have shaped us in some way. And it's not to just gloss over the tough times because there are real tough times in life that we have to just feel our way through. We don't know when we're gonna to get to the end of it. Because, and it's okay to mourn. And it's okay to mourn and it's okay to be in that pain. It's okay. But the Five of Cups reminds us that there are uh, better things to come. There are things in our life that we can hold dear to us. And just to remember those things alongside any grieving process we might be going through. Yeah. And then the word of the week that we got this week was benevolence from uh, Anima, who's a great supporter of the show. Thank you so much. You. So benevolence, uh, what's your take on that? For me, it is acts of kindness. Um, but benevolence really I mean being kind to each other being gentle to each other offering each other support maybe in our darkest hour just a little text message to someone or a note or a card yeah. to say we're thinking about you totally um, agree. kindness is is so important in the world right now yeah because there was um, there's a Facebook group that I belong to and somebody shared would people have shoe boxes to contribute to a shoebox scheme um, to provide help for, I think, mainly orphaned or very um, impoverished children, which I think is a tremendous thing. And someone I'm fond of then came in and said, 
oh well, these shoeboxes schemes, they're linked to uh, faith charities and there's some kind of criteria that the children have to agree to in order to get... Well, I checked it out with someone who um, does know quite a lot about this and one of the things that the charity she denotes to is that they make it clear that that's not something they need to do. If there has been some impropriety around that, I think it's important before we go into that sort of, uh, if you like, response of uh, political correctness, is to understand where the other person was coming from. So I think the other person was coming from a good place because they immediately said, look, if you want to give uh, some shoe boxes to, to me, there are other non-faith uh, charities that I can contribute these to but it felt that it kind of choked off the moment a little bit and we do seem to be in a world where people will very very quickly say these kind of things and it's important to understand the overall merit of where an act of kindness may come from. Now we did have someone ask me a question for this week and it is Lyama Ahmad and your question uh, Lyama was you said that Saturn was approaching your moon position natally what did that mean well Saturn of course can be to do with retraction and also it can be to do with boundaries but it's also about structures so if we were thinking about the moon is in terms of the home it does depend on which house your moon position resides in. Now I have the moon in Aquarius, but in the fourth house. So Saturn has actually been stationed on my moon for a lot of this year before the retrograde really took it back to six degrees before it went direct on the 11th of October. So I've had Saturn agitated in its square with Uranus right on my uh, moon. So it can lead to some challenges domestically you know, maybe some people would feel that their uh, living accommodation was a bit cramped or perhaps cold or next to noisy neighbours or perhaps near to a busy street or it could mean that there were some strains or tensions around the family matter. But it depends where your moon is. If your moon, for example, is in the ninth house, your need is for freedom. So Saturn being conjunct the moon there could be very limiting. It just depends. Um, but essentially, if we see Saturn as being an agent of, 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 of problems, then that can almost be a challenge in itself. So we need to sort of see it as a way to try to redouble our efforts, put that effort and application in to improve a situation. So it could be where you know, in terms of the fourth house, where we're perhaps painting, decorating and repairing. And that would be a good way to, to, to work with the energy. Now, we also have got a winner for the birthday free prize draw. And that person is Leanne, who was born in Wellington in uh, New Zealand. Now, as ever, I don't do a lot of preparation on these, but I will tell you, Leanne, that you are going to have your 60th birthday this week, so congratulations from us both. But over the last few years, Neptune has been going through your 12th house. And I think because you've got Chiron in the 12th house, which Elisa has, that's a very tender location for Chiron. Chiron is very much to do with where we assist others. So it likely makes you a very compassionate person. But having Neptune going through that journey as well in the 12th house, you may have gone through a period of withdrawal and your physical energy over the last couple of years may have been quite low. But it's now in your first house and that's a chance to start again. In terms of your uh, life number, your number for your new year is one in terms of perfections. So that's exciting because you've gone through a 12 number over the last year, more of that reflection. You've also gone through your a second Saturn return. Your Saturn is in Capricorn where it likes to be, but it is very close to Jupiter and they're both in the 11th house. I think that group situations and networking have provided opportunities for you, but I think at the moment it's possible that maybe there's a bit of a shake-up going on in terms of where you see your future heading and who you see being part of the project because 
Pluto, the planet of transformation, sits right on your Saturn in the 11th house and also is going to be moving towards Jupiter. Now that actually can be a very positive link if we can handle the energy carefully. But I think Pluto conjunct your Saturn in the 11th house. Maybe someone that you've been associated with for a very long time is going out of your life for some reason, but new people can come in. Now, when you were born, you also had the sun at five degrees in Scorpio, but in the eighth house, you had Venus in Leo, uh, Venus in Libra, sorry, which is its home location, Mercury, uh, the sun and Neptune, but also in the sign of Scorpio, Mars at home, and the part of fortune but your mars is in the ninth house so i think there's been part of you that although you've enjoyed uh, psychologically uh, working with your qualities in life there's another part of you that likes to be quite a free spirit but if we take the midpoint between your moon in the care in cancer which is in the fourth house so home is of paramount importance to you even if you like a bit of personal space around close relationships with mars in the ninth the midpoint in cancer at 10 degrees the sun at five degrees in scorpio means your midpoint is seven degrees virgo and it's in the sixth house and you have a whole clustering of planets in the sixth house and one of those is Pluto which is conjunct that midpoint so I think you are someone who has a lot of precision in your approach a very Virgo side to your nature that helps you to provide services be supportive to people has great uh, levels of discrimination you can uh, be very concentrated and like a degree of organisation in your situation, I feel. But that Mercury in your natal horoscope does square up Saturn and Jupiter, and particularly Saturn. So, I don't know, I think there's been times when there's been jealousy or some politics around relationships with friends or group uh, situations, and I definitely think some of that could be playing out at the moment. Now, in terms of your solar return, the midpoint for this year is also Virgo, 19 degrees, but the ascendant, 4 degrees Libra. But then you have Mercury, Mars and the Sun all in your first house. I definitely think this is a time of new beginnings for you. And you have a square between the Sun and Saturn. So if there is a sensitive situation going on in your love life, this is really confronting you to sort it out because Saturn's in the fifth, Sun in the first. Maybe you want to be a freer spirit and someone's resisted that. There's been some politics, but the fact that Venus and Jupiter, a bit like this week's stars in general, are in a gorgeous uh, sextile, uh, that gives you a great opportunity to recreate your social interactions with other people or new possibilities romantically over the next year if that's appropriate to your situation uh, but certainly with Venus in the third house how you communicate with people and what you get back will be very very important to you indeed so that is the uh, winner and in terms of the modality what cards are you going for this week this week we're going to use the healing with the angels oracle, uh, oracle cards very healing very beautiful. Okay. Ooh, so the words on this card are ideas and inspirations. Um, and we have this woman on the card and it's almost like an angel is whispering some ideas and inspiration to her um, if she's looking for it. It's funny because so many of us are searching for motivation. Motivation to move on to the next project or motivation to do something. Yeah, because it's not just about ticking off practical chores. It's actually having a passion, isn't it? That's right. And for me, I feel like motivation comes from inspiration. It's like this cycle. In order to get motivated, sometimes we have to take an action step just to get that ball rolling a bit even if we don't really want to and then the ideas come and the inspiration comes more and that motivates us more so if we're struggling or we're dealing with a bit of procrastination i think just doing one some step. action step one step could right. make a whole lot of difference this week well that's great advice 
Well, thank you so much again for all your very, very kind comments. And if you would like to enter your birthday details for the show for week commencing the 1st of November, please do. I won't be able to do uh, a live response for that, but the winner will be selected and I will send a free 12 month forecast for that. But please send in your words of the week as usual. If we are not able to use them on week commencing the 1st, then what we will do is carry those words over to week commencing the 8th. But it's been a real pleasure being with you. Thank you so much for joining us. And from the A-team it is... Goodbye from him. And it's goodbye from her. Goodbye. goodbye.